Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q3 of the weekly contest 336. Count the number of beautiful subarrays. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this poem. So I actually solved this one about 1 minute and 12 seconds or so. Um, this is actually really quick. I don't know what kind of took it over me. But the, the key thing to notice for this bitwise operation thing is that um, just looking at these two things, uh, just making this operation of what, what this operation does, right? It's just look at two index, look at, um, it's just look at two ones and then s mm, subtract them, right? Uh, from both of them. And then for me, that is just an XO operation. And basically, if you have a list of numbers, if, um, it is a beautiful array, if the XO of that subarray is zero, right? Um, and that's basically what it comes to because you can think about it as the way that there, there are a couple of visualizations you can do to to see this. Um, for example, it's just about parity and counting and all this stuff. And XOR is a way of counting even number of bits on uh, uh, on each digit, right? So you can kind of think of it that way. Uh, another way to think about it is, and th this is kind of the way that I was kind of leaning toward thinking about it, was uh, in game theory, you have this also... XOR number of like this max number, right? Um, that's kind of how you figure that out and coming back to, to parity, going back to a zero state. And eh, I'm not going to go over it that much because I think maybe my head just kind of goes a little bit complicated on that one. But the idea is still the same that um, for the kth digit or whatever, um, you want them to be given number of ones, right? So so that's basically the, um, how I get to XOR. And then after that... <clears throat> Is a, the number of subarrays, and this subarray part is actually not, uh, just to be clear, yeah, not not that straightforward to be honest. Um, the idea here is going to be prefix sum, right? Uh, and in this case, the sum is an XOR sum, but it is still prefix sum. Um, basically, the idea, and I, I think some of it, the the core part. For me, the difficulty about this problem is just converting it into what I said. Because I think after that, I think this was an I think this was um this was a leak code problem. Like I, I I'm pretty sure the, the code is like hundred percent identical. I mean maybe wearable names or whatever. Um, um it's just like I think there is a leak code problem that is like um how many subways are are there of where the XOR is zero or something like this, right? And and the idea here is prefix sum. Um, uh, sorry, let me just pull up the painting thing so you could see it. I was going to like do some ASCII art, but then I was like, eh, maybe this is a little bit cleaner, so hang on. Sorry. Um, yeah. But basically the idea is that, you know, let's take a regular sum, right? Not an XOR sum. Um, and then the idea is that okay, let's say you, you uh, what the heck? you know, let's say your prefix sum. What is going on here? Okay, let's say your prefix sum is something like one, two, five, you know, seven, ten, or whatever, right? And then fifteen, something like that. And then the idea here is that to get, you know, um, and, and if you and you should practice this because this comes up a, a bit on lead code. I don't know about interviews to be frank, but basically, if you're saying okay. Uh, and this is just a prefix sum, so maybe your your actual array is one one um, three two three five, right? And then you maybe your question is like, okay, how many subarrays are there of of where where the subarray sum is five, right? That's the same thing. So um, basically, you know, you see it here, you see it here, and you see it well just just by itself. And then the idea here by using the prefix sum is that uh, and this starts at zero with zero elements. What the it's kind of too weird. Uh, zero for zero element. And then the idea here is that you can think about it as this this line that takes the, the sum of the first x elements and then and then um and then to get say this one is just this big prefix sum minus this prefix sum, right? And another way of and also like for example the one that goes up to ten, and then the one that goes up to five, right? Um, so something like this. Uh, so you, so this is to get this uh, sum, and this is to get this sum, right? So that's the idea about prefix sums in general. Um, hopefully, you know you have some background into it because uh, it is going to get a little bit trickier. Um, the idea here 
is using dynamic programming, you ask yourself, well, let me delete some stuff right now. And I'm still going over the prefix sum version, the, the regular sum, not the XOR sum. Um, the idea is that, okay, let's say we're, we're going from left to right, right? So we're, we're scanning from left to right. We go, okay, um, you know, uh, let's say we're, we're, we're going to five. We go, okay, how many prefix sum is there? How many subarrays are there that sums to zero? Well, if, if the prefix sum is five, then we just want to see how many uh, how many starting points there are zero, right? And I kind of messed up here because there are no negative numbers. So you can think about something like maybe one, negative one, two, negative two, five, or something like this, right? So then now um, the prefix sum is going to be zero, one, zero, two, zero, five, right? And then let's say you are here, then now you know that every previous frequent, uh, every previous occurrence of zero is going to give you um, a prefix or an, a, a subarray sum of five, because um, because that means that you know, for example, this zero means that this prefix uh, or gets subtracted from this prefix is equal to five, right? So this is five, and same thing here, right? This zero means that this prefix minus this prefix. Uh, it's going to be five and so forth. So that's basically the idea behind prefix sum dynamic programming um, in terms of for frequency, right? So basically, you're just going, okay, my current sum is five. How do I get to um, how do I, how many times have I seen zero? Because that's the starting uh, point of an array where from zero to five, the sum is going to be five, right? Okay. So that's basically the the, um, the regular sum version, and I wanted to focus on that because now the XOR sum is just really, honestly, the same thing, right? Um, and what I mean by that. And here I'm going to just use uh, binary numbers because every bit is going to be independent anyway, so I'm just going to use 1 and 0 because it's easier for me to do the math. But yeah, so let's say you have 1, you have 0, you have 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, right? And then now the XOR sum is going to start with 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, right? So that means that going from left to right, um, 1, uh, we're starting at the first point and we go okay how many times have we start at we've seen a one before so that the sub array for that is going to be xor to zero right the answer is none so we're fine but we we keep track that we saw a one uh so here now we go to see this one and we say okay we've seen one prefix sum prefix xor sum of one once before so then that means that there's one count because it means that th this is going to uh, um because it means that did I mess up something? Hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because this means that... Um, no, no, this is good. That means that all the the prefix, because we know that... Uh, let, let's call this... Uh, let's call this A and, and, you know, right? What we're looking for is A, XOR, some... some k is equal to zero right and of course if you know your xor then then you know k is just equal to a so we're just looking for a number of number where the prefix xor the the current prefix is going to be zero and that's basically the idea uh, behind the code and now i'm going to show you the code uh, hopefully this is the background that i'm thinking of right um and a lot of this is just experience um so don't think that i i'm you know uh, whatever about it, right? Because I have struggles as well. But that's basically, bef uh, you know, I, I this is for the frequency that we've seen before. We set zero as the first one. I've made this mistake many times. That's why now I know how to, uh, I know to do it. Um, for prefix sum, this is for the length zero indexes, right? Um, prefix, length zero prefixes. And then for each one, we update the prefix sum in the current. And then we see how many times we've seen it before because that 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 um those numbers will xr to zero with the current thing and then we just add one and at the end we just return the number of times we counted and that's that's the answer um 
I actually did this in a minute and 12 seconds. I don't know how I did it. Uh, I think it's just one of those phases. But don't look up to me too much because Q4 was a disaster for me. Uh, but we'll go over that in another video if you're interested. But yeah, um, but this is going to be linear time and linear space because, well, scene just can kind of grow linearly. Um, but, you know, linear time, linear space is fine. And that's pretty much it. That's all I have with this one. Uh, let me know what you think. And yeah, you could watch me solve a live during the contest now. Wait, let me do it. Okay, fine. Number beautiful supper race. And it's 10 to the 5th. Okay, bit. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem uh, and this explanation and this contest and everything in between. Stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.